What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Back Alley Fans. It's Miss Fans. You know it. Thank you so much for coming through, guys. Really do appreciate each and every single one of you guys for coming through. You know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to ask. Hit that like button, guys. Hit the like button. Let everybody know that you're enjoying this awesome, awesome show here. So go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, oh, my gosh. I can't even believe it. We got, we finally got them together, ladies and gentlemen. We got them together. It is a, our, uh, you know, we got our resident, our resident, um, to an ear, uh, herself, I'm not going to say who, um, but you should know who it is, but regardless, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, we got <clears throat> to a th- oh, Lord, to- we got to a thon in the building, and we got, oh, we land the plane, yes, yes, we do, <laughs> so, ladies, thank you for coming, thank you for coming, aka Nene, aka Finsanity Five, how you ladies doing? I'm, I'm great. You're great. I'm. I'm just. I'm just happy for the opportunity to be here today. I'm, I'm excited. You're excited. Ooh. Okay. Good. Good. I like that. Well, listen, ladies. Uh, you know what the rules are. Uh, in the ring, this is um, not UFC. Uh, two thirty. This is uh, MPC number three. So I appreciate you guys for coming through. You've been read the rules in the backstage, so uh, we should be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, anywho, we got three topics. We're going to talk about them. We want to make sure that we get through all of them. First topic. But Tua hasn't used his opportunities. Neither. Where does that come from, ladies and gentlemen? A little backstory. We were talking the other day and how Skylar Thompson didn't take advantage of his opportunities being a seventh-round pick. So... Uh, Madam Nene over here, she said, but Tua hasn't used his opportunities neither, and he's a top five pick. So we will be discussing that first. Then we're going to be going over uh, Finn Sanity's take on the 2020 basketball finals and how she is absolutely afraid of letting Russ cook. But ladies and gentlemen, let's go over the first topic. Uh, uh, Nene, you want to go ahead and start? Yeah, and I, I'll be quick. Just let me know when when to uh, cease fire. I'm not gonna say my, land my plane. I'm in the turret, and I got the bullets flying. And we and just let me know when to cease fire. Um, I got this. So my issue with when people go after um, Skylar Thompson, who is a backup, who is um, collectively someone that Greer and Mike McDaniel, people forget that. Um, Tua was not Mike McDaniel's pick, but Skylar Thompson was. He's a backup. He's not a starter, and and those are for reasons. But Tua is a, a fifth round pick, uh, highly salted. I remember uh, when they was talking about Tua, they were sending out Greer and Ross to his collegiate games, and you know they were talking more about tanking for Tua than actually what the Miami Dolphins were doing. The Miami Dolphins have given Tua Tagovailoa every opportunity to be great at what he does. However, comma, he has not been. He's been okay, but he has not been great. They have fired a coach for Tua Tagovailoa. They have brought in similar players that he had at Alabama, and I get into that with the Russ debate. But I have never seen a player so coveted outside of maybe LeBron James and Kevin Durant where you bring in so many different pieces to ensure that this person is somewhat functionable at his task, and he continues to fall short. Every year is either injuries, the offensive line, he doesn't have wide receivers, it's the coach, it's, the, it's everybody else but Tua himself. The sad part about this, I don't think Tua is really responsible for the narratives that are around him. I think it is his insane fans. Yes, they are insane. They are the worst of the worst. I thought LeBron James fans were bad. The <gasps> Tua fans are worse. They have no objectivity. They have no loyalty. Their loyalty is to him. And the saddest part about these Tua fans, they do not even reflect his attitude. Turn up! Tua reflects himself as a Christian. Tua reflects himself as a humble human being. Tua non-Tua fans are none of the least. They disrespect Dolphins fans. They talk about our history. They talk about our players, such as Skylar Thompson. They talk about anybody that may come in 
to compete with Tua. These are the problems with Tua Tonga Valoa. Not necessarily him as the human being, the person. It is his fans. It is his fans that probably came from Alabama, Hawaii, or wherever they came from. Whatever the dregs and the sewage they came from. Because they make talking football hard to tolerate. They make talk about the Miami Dolphins to hard to tolerate. And they make us evaluate him harder than maybe he should be. So technically, Tua has not, has not done anything wrong per se, but his fan base, oh, they make it hard to cheer for him. They make it hard to acknowledge that he has injuries. They make it hard to acknowledge that the decisions that are being made around him are not necessarily his, but Christopher Aloysius Greer III. And I will put my gun back in his holster, cool it off, and wait for fan sanity's insanity. Oh, oh wait, wait, before you go, Fitzsanity, I just wanted to make sure to clarify, because I thought I heard something, and I want to make sure that that we get it right. Did you say Hawaii or Hawaii? Because I heard Hawaii. Well, I mean, there is, to be honest, and, it's, and I'm not disrespecting anybody from the region, but there is popularity to the Miami Dolphins because of his descent, his um, Pacific American uh, ascent, uh, in a lot of those, what Hawaii, right? Polynesian, so, yeah. Polynesian. So that's why I said it's it's essentially those people that have migrated to the Miami Dolphins. They're not originally Miami Dolphin fans. They have come because of him. And not and when I speak to these people, if you are not these people, the shoe is not fitting. But if you're the dog that I'm hitting, please holler at me because you're making it hard to be a part of the Miami Dolphins fan base. Uh, from Santa the ma'am to a song. Uh, your your life. Hey, listen, uh, I love everything that Nay said, but everything she said was not to the point of the question and the topic that we are on. She's supposed to tell me how Tua has not taken advantage of his opportunity to be the starting quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. Only thing that I heard her, you know, harp on that point was that I guess uh, he hasn't been great in her eyes. And hey, if you don't think he's been great, I I'm not going to argue that point. But what I will say is that every year since he's come into the league, um, his completion percentage has increased, his yards has increased, his touchdowns have increased. We do understand that we took a chance on a quarterback that was coming off a, a catastrophic injury and maybe the time base that we have as fans because we want everything quick. We want the microwave and all that type you know, stuff. We want it ooh, hot and ready. But how many – Quarterbacks have come into this league hot and ready and still don't have a Super Bowl. We can come back to that a little bit later. Anyway, um, what I do, with, what I would like to talk about is how um, Tua uh, has, you know, finally eclipsed the 4,000 mark. Uh, hopefully next year we can maybe get to that 5,000 because the numbers keep going up every year. Uh, the amount of games that he's played, anything that he's done, you want to say taking care of opportunity? He saw that he had a problem and an issue with concussions. He went and took the opportunity to say, you know what? I need to find a new way to protect myself. We could talk about the offensive line, but Tua took the initiative to say, you know what? They're not going to be able to take care of me and keep me hitless 100% of the time. Other times, I need to put that on me to be better at that. And he did. Now, if you want to talk about success, yes, we could talk about how the Dolphins still have not won a playoff game, first playoff game. It's a defending Super Bowl champ. It's hard. It's not easy to, easy to win. And this team, this team still has to learn to win. And Tua still has to learn how to win in the NFL. But we do see progression. We've seen quarterbacks come in here. Hey, we think that it's going to be the next, you know, lightning ball. They're going to be great. And then they just plateau out. Where has Tua plateaued yet? He's still consistently striving in an upward projection to where we expect him to be. And I, I know we want to get into necessarily what he is and what he isn't worth. But I, what I will say is he's worth another year of giving him a shot to see what he can produce with this team. They gave him a weapon like Tyreek Hill. He has taken the opportunity to truly truly utilize that. When they gave him Jalen Waddle, he utilized that weapon. They gave him a running game with the play calling of McDaniel and all that. That's been utilized. So. We as fans, yeah, we have a goal of winning a playoff game, winning a Super Bowl. But if that's how you want to garner a QB taking care of taking an opportunity, which not, which is fine. I'm not against that. 
then that's cool. But to say that he hasn't taken the opportunity to get better and taking a shot to say, you know what, I do want to be the leader of this team. I do want to be the franchise, franchise quarterback of this team. He has absolutely done that. And like I said, because what this came from was me saying, hey, Skyler had a shot. Was it a fair shot? No. Has he had all the things given to him, like two ass? No, but he had a shot, and he, didn't, and he didn't take it. Not everything is always going to be perfect in the NFL, right? Not everything is always perfect for Tua. But what we do see is progression in the right direction. It's fan frustration that, that puts all these narratives out. And that's all I got to say. We're delaying flights today. Let's go. Can I rebut that point? Because I have a couple of points. Of course, because of course. Go ahead, ma'am. You, technically, you didn't even answer your own question. So, oh, how did what? I answer? Well, I saw how. I saw, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, that's why I asked where you finish. Because I was waiting for you to actually answer your own question. But since you didn't, I'm just going to go how you rerouted the question as to the standards of a top five pick. Is the standards of a top five pick is glorified offensive stats that still equal you in the same position that you were, let's say, 23, 22, 21, 20, 24 years later. The the reasoning for a top five pick and a QB1 for a person that we are thinking about paying over 50 million is not progression in individual stats. So we can put these grossly numbers as fluff. It's just like a whole bunch of uh, whipped cream. It's something that you could put over my pancakes because I can't taste it and it has no significant value to the product. The goal in the, of what we was told is a playoff contending team that can get to the Super Bowl. But Tua, in the moments that are the brightest, he is not going to an upward, a upward trajectory. What employee can you say has a five-year contract but only fully shows up to work only one out the four. So to me, taking your opportunity, right? One out of four years, you can actually perform your job at to where you're supposed to be. And even in that year, when the games that matter, Tennessee, a team that was not a high top team that we should have been fearing, a team where you had all attributes to get the job done. And how what happened? basically a turnover to end the game. That is not quality of a top five pick. That is not quality of a person that we are trying to extend for another four years. That is basically Ryan Tannehill 2.0. The only difference is you brought in a high-speed coach that's supposed to be the quarterback whisperer that had to show you 700 films of a doctor series to prove that you're a man again and a quarterback again. What top five pick needs that type of support? Then technically, you probably were never a top five pick. If these are the things that we have to coddle and kumbaya, we have to have the best facilities. We got to basically draft the Alabama Clemson Tide to, in order for you to be efficient. We cried with Devontae Parker. We cried about the offensive line. We cried about Brian Flores. You got everything you want. You got Tyreek Hill. You got Waddle. You got Big Banjo for the defense. You got Mike McDaniel, your personal massager of a quarterback's ego. That is not significant of a top five pick. So maybe the title was wrong. He was never a top five pick. He was a glorified QB that had talent around him that made him look more than what he is. And that's why you have people such as the spokesman for two and on in this conversation that have, will give you all of these glorified stats of each year. Yeah, each year I may throw two yards deeper, but if I'm still losing the games that I'm supposed to win, if I'm still crumbling after Thanksgiving, do you know in the two seasons that Tua did look somewhat of a quarterback, you know, the last season before that he couldn't finish and we had to rely on the seven round draft pick to finish his job but mm -hmm. every single what time happened? every single time he was given the opportunity against um uh, san francisco and guess what happened with san francisco two was incompetence birth brock purdy mr irrelevant we wouldn't even know who brock purdy was if he didn't make Tua look like a seven round pick himself against him in a game that he should have won in San Francisco in 2022. Then he went on to play uh, Justin Herbert the, the next following season. 
crap the bed again, looking dysfunctional. I thought it was Brian Flores that had you confused. You got Mike McDaniel, Waddle, Tyreek Hill. You still don't look like you don't know what's going on. Like you don't know your left from your right foot. And speaking of moving forward to this season, we finally get 11 grades. Hip, hip, hooray. But then you go ahead and crap the bed against the Buffalo Bills to where you had to play in negative conditions in Kansas City. If we would have took care of business with teams such as the Tennessee Titans, teams such as Buffalo the second time we played them in our house. So, yes, he has had all of the facilities. We just got rated, what, the number one facility because we got the best cut grass and the best hamburger and cheese with bacon in the, in the side of corn chips. Maybe that's why he's thicker than a snicker right now, and it has nothing to do with no off-season plan when your own teammate is going on national TV saying how much you gain weight. So he has been given every opportunity. I'm sure there's plenty of other quarterbacks in the league if they had a Tyreek Hill, if they had a Jalen Waddle, if they would have had all of the weapons, Devon A.Chain, and all these guys, right, instead of getting these glorified regular season stats that are basically fluff, and you play in conditions that are suitable for anybody for a vacation spot, and you can't get at least a playoff game in your house after having a three-game lead against a team that was falling apart so much that they had to rehire an offensive coach mid-season? Get out of here with the foolishness. This is the problem. We sit here and we give this garnish. The stuff that, yes, it's a product. Parsley is a product. Um, whipped cream is a product. But it tastes like nothing. All it does is make something that crap look like it's a good product. But when you bite in it, it tastes, it smells, and it feels like crap. And that's exactly what we have right now. We sit here being honest with ourselves. But we'll sit here when he was number one in offense. I don't think they give you extra credit for that in the playoffs to get to the Super Bowl. Nobody who really cares about winning care anything about that. If you have all of these weapons, if you have all of this emotional support where they're giving you massages on the sideline to build up your confidence and playing the Kalukali or whatever little thing you play to build your morale, and you still go out there and give us the same performance, ukulele. which is a loss. So it's that is my thing. Whatever the weapon is, it's a flute or recorder or a trumpet, it doesn't matter. No, it's a little yeah. guitar. Uh, it's, a, yeah. I think, a four-string guitar. I, I get it, no. but the point remains, I don't know any other quarterback in NF his, NFL history that has to be coddled and pampered. That's not true. There are other quarterbacks that have been coddled immensely. It's just we notice Tua because he's he's our quarterback. But trust me, there have been other 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 QBs that have been coddled like him. Right, Maybe not to the sense. extent of him because he seems like he's been like extra his entire career. I know people that have known him since he was a kid. And they have told me exactly how the family has been, how how they've brought him up, you know, through middle school, high school, college, all of that. And yeah, they've definitely been uh they've definitely made sure to put him in the best position for him to succeed. Right. And here's my thing, and I will just I will get again grab some more bullets to put in my weapon for later conversation because I don't again I want to be careful of people's time here. I don't want to just fly around. And uh, just on that note, when you're dealing with somebody that's studying ministry and practicing law, you're going to have a long-winded person. I don't know what kind of church or court you've ever been to and the person that is speaking that has those qualifications are short with the two. So I'll get back to my point. But when I watch people like Jordan Love, their first playoff game, they're winning. I watch a rookie, CJ Strong, I always mess up his last name. But he doesn't have all of the weapons that we have. He doesn't give in all of the golden nights and having people fired and hired just to coddle to me, having a whole offense that just catered to my little personal feelings. And I and see, this is the thing. I don't like talking about Tua this way. But when he's still get, QB one though. When you get when you get fans that become irrational and saying, Oh, well, he had the the I, the, the hardest conversation for me is when I hear people. Well, he was in the MVP conversation. Right. Respect it. But then you bash the man that actually won the MVP. It's absurd how they think. Right? Now, I don't have a problem with acknowledging that Tua was an MVP candidate. But when you actually uh, bash and try to destroy the man's character that actually won the war, and not just won the war, but won it almost unanimously. So that's the that's the influx. 
that's why fans get a little hot when we get into this conversation because if they're just honest about where he is and what he is I think it would be such better dialogue in the community because when you sit here and you try to put these little fluff stats oh he threw for 10 more yards this year than last year I don't care nothing about that I need you to win these games with the talent that you have been allotted when you talk about Skylar Thompson Skylar Thompson that offense he may get a couple of snaps with the first teamers this person has been working with them all summer all season off season and yet and yet when you fall short instead of owning up to your shortcomings not being able to be clutch you're sitting here blaming it on communication that's garbage and that's why people are so passionate and vigorous in their venom with Tua and the people, not people that it's support. It's the fans. The fans are the ones that make it, to some people, tough to root for him because the fans just go off. But let me, let me, if you don't mind me, uh, no, I'm uh, done. I'm done. Scrapping I'm in real time. quick because I do have to say this, and I know I don't speak a lot. Obviously, um, I like to let you ladies go off, and I know. Trust me, Finsan, you're gonna go off, no problem. But I do need to say this. It it. He has been the most focused, in my opinion, uh, out of a lot of players I've seen in the NFL since I've been watching the football. But he hasn't lived up to his top five pick potential. Or, or the top five pick. If he would have been picked anywhere else, like we were talking about earlier today, had he been picked Anywhere else, whether it was late in the first or second or below, we wouldn't be talking about this. We would have been understanding, listen, you know, hey, he just came off of an injury. He just came off of this. He's been dealing with that. You got to give him time to get over this. Fine. But if you get dropped, uh, drafted in the top five pick, um, expectations are way higher, like way higher. And he hasn't gotten there yet. I'm not saying that he won't. I'm just saying he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't gotten there yet. But go ahead. Go ahead, Insanity. What you got? Your okay, rebuttal. Because okay. none of you have actually <laughs> answered this flipping question. And that's what, what question? Has Tua taken advantage of his opportunities? Yes. I said that the time that the Miami Dolphins have given him, he has done nothing but progress. I said he was given, he's taken the opportunity to find a way to protect himself. Are those not, are those, is that not taking an issue taking the opportunity, right? My thing is like this. We as fans, right, we have top top five pick, right? And obviously when when back in that day when a lot of us were talking about it, we understood that that would come time, like there would be a rehab period, right? And I feel like we are now absolutely outside of that and we're seeing it. But please do not take 100% the ineptness of this team as a total and put it all on the weight and the shoulders of Tua, right? My... My point was elaborate no, on that ineptness because last time I checked, he had one of the best rosters last he, year, at least. Absolutely, and absolutely, nothing but happened. Did, but but did he but did he go to war with that roster? In some of the biggest moments, no. When you talk about the collapse in in December, like this was a well put together team defensively and offensively, and we understand that once December came, all. Uh, that injury report got sick. Oh, so, see, no, no, no. I don't give <laughs> nobody that injury report. I acknowledge that bodies weren't there, but you cannot do that when every other quarterback, this was the same thing. It's the end of the season. What do you okay, expect? Miss, miss Fins, and, but what I will say to you is also in that same respect, there's a reason why you prefer certain personnel on the field is they're not. So, so when people say that, I get it. Like, you still have to play the game. You still have to try to find a way to win. But it does make it a little bit harder, does it not? Can we not acknowledge that? Yeah. Can you acknowledge that had nothing to do? Uh, I mean, did that happen to Kansas City? It had nothing to do with it? Like They were, like, missing, uh, they were missing bodies. When you say it had nothing to do with it, right, the fact that we could not even garner our pass rush and players, quarterbacks were just sitting and having the time of their lives, that's, that's bad. That's Hold bad. On. Hold on, the defense wasn't the reason why we could. could I was, I was gonna get into it, but I didn't. I don't even want to go ahead. I, I go had ahead. to rebut that because, and okay. even in the Tennessee game, dear, the defense gave you the ball, which mm-hmm. normally mm-hmm. a top 
five quarterback or a true QB mm -hmm. one, you're giving them two minutes to close this thing out. You produce. You don't sit there, and, and I'm sorry to rebut this, but the way that I am so vigorously, but I, I can't stand it because we're not being honest with the situation. Okay. You don't sit there if he does score within that two minutes. Tua is him. Tua is GOAT. See that? But then when he loses, no. oh, well, did you know how many people was out? Did you know the injuries he dealt with? No. Oh if you're oh going to be okay. QB1, you're going to have to be in that position. I'm going to say this and I'll land it back to you. I put oh. this quote as you was talking because my answer was absolutely not. He hasn't shown us anything. Ms. Fins, if you need it for the record for the court. First question. Thank is you, ma'am. No. Yes, I will accept it as the judge in this case. Thank you. No. And here's the quote. A QB1 can progress you for decades. Decades such as Dan Marino, Tom Brady, uh, Patrick Mahomes, um, and e even some of these younger guys look like they're going to be able to take their team and make them competitive to not just get to the playoffs, but at least get a win. Or you can go into the middle of the road, and that's where the Miami Dolphins are right now. We can get to 500 or maybe a couple of games over 500 and then get to the playoffs and you're one and done. That's all on the quarterback. And the reason why that's on the quarterback um, panel and people that's listening to Miss Finsanity, because the quarterback one makes the most money. They get the most accountability. Most of the times, wins or losses are on the shoulders of the QB1. So we're not going to sit here and let him be a role player when he loses. and But then when he wins, you're calling him the MVP. He's going to have to be in the same accountability chair as the rest of the people that, that have that same title as QB1. That chair right there? That one? The one with the money? Yeah, that's, that's all the money we don't have to pay people because it's going to him. Yeah, it happens to so everybody that's got to pay their quarterback. But, I mean, at the... Go ahead, Cincinnati, because let me gather my thoughts. Not my thoughts. Yeah, take your time and gather your thoughts. All I'm saying is, and I love because, like, for for everyone, the end all be all is is two games, right? It's the Tennessee game, and it's the Buffalo Bills game, right? Okay, cool. No, um, that ain't the only me. one. That is not the only I one. I can I? Finish? But go ahead. I, you know what the funny thing is? I don't interrupt y'all now. One time, I let y'all. Go on and do what y'all got to do. Say what you got to say. And then I come back. But for the most part, what I'm saying is the two games that a lot of people like to bring up, which Nate, you have brought up these two games in this conversation was the Bills game because we were home and you brought up the Tennessee game. So that's why I'm using that. All the little narratives and things that people are out here saying about, oh, he's Ryan Tannehill 2.0 and all these little, you know, point markers and stuff like that that we hear i i love that you're regurgitating this type of stuff i thought i would have really gotten to hear nene speak but you know what if you want to you know put out the things that are being said you know 20 times over we can have at it what i'm saying is is that for us we as fans right our expectation was we wanted instantaneous success we wanted it like like instant oatmeal, instant grits. Like we gotta have, we gotta have. And I get it. We've been starving for for decades, decades for for a playoff win or even to be in a Super Bowl again, right? We haven't been back since the '80s, and we haven't won since the '70s. And I understand that. I, I, I've gone through that with him. What I'm saying is, is that what I see with Tua, is that this team, this front office, gave him the opportunity to say, you know what, rehab, get better, take the time. It's not going to be about, hey, this this one year we need what's in it. Now, granted, you saw the team go all in last year. Absolutely. The move that Chris Greer has, has made has put our roster to be one of the top that we thought we would be, you know, able to win a playoff game this year. We all thought, I remember me, Ms. Finns and I, were talking about going to a home playoff game, right? That was snatched from us. It is what it is. What I'm saying is, for the expectations that I have for Tua, as in getting better, progressing each and every year, trying to get back, getting to the status of that QB1. He has done that, and he's shown this organization so much of that that they are now willing. Fans' distaste and distrust and, and feelings towards it have nothing to do with it for me. 
I'm looking at what the organization is saying to me. And they're saying, you know what, Tua? We've seen enough. We're going to pay you. And you're going to be our franchise quarterback. So to me, if the organization feels like he took the opportunity and they impressed him enough to say, you know what? You only played one whole season. But we've seen the progression each and every year. We're seeing the work that you're trying to do to get better, to put yourself in the position to be our franchise quarterback. We're going to give you that. How how the fans feel means nothing to me. Because at the end of the day, the fans don't make a single decision for this organization. We never have. We never will. As much as we feel like our opinions and our feelings are important, they're not. The organization has told me that, you know what, we were going to take our time. We were going to put our trust in what's the name? And think about all the things. What's the name? And you said something about, like, not every QB has. What's the name? Name, name a horrible, a horrible roster, a horrible roster that's a competitive team. Oh, what is Grant not supposed to do? Put things around him? Like, come on. Like, when people say stuff like that, he's doing his job. He's trying to make this, this, what's in it, this team the best that it can be. And at the end of the day, Tua has grown with this team. As this team has gotten better, with the roster, with the personnel, and all that, Tua has gotten better each and every year. And to me, that's why he has absolutely taken advantage of the opportunity because a lot of organizations would not have given their QB this much grace. You see where right now you have a lot of organizations wanting to move off their QBs after so many years. But there's a reason why the Miami Dolphins are still saying, you know what? He has progressed. He is getting better. And we believe in him and we trust in him because he has taken those opportunities. Imagine if you get a guy like Tyreek Hill and your numbers don't get better. That's not taking advantage of the opportunity. So that's where where I go with it. And I mean like this, like I said, what the fans want is what Nay is arguing. What the organization is doing is what I'm arguing. And I think that's why I have nothing against anything she said. I believe that she was 100% right in everything she said. But what I will say is he absolutely has taken advantage of the opportunity that the organization has given him. They've given him a grace period and a time to get better, to rehab, and he has done that. And we see it with not only the numbers, we've seen it in the increase of wins. And that's where I'm going to go with it. And we can we can go back to it. All which right, team would you, which team would you, 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 you flying the plane like me? You keep saying which that's team, what I'm which, 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 team, which team would you rather have, the 2020 team or the 2023 team? Can I re- so. please rebut the, the pursuer? We have we said. have 27 minutes to get through <laughs> the rest of this show. Go ahead. So the, the whole thing I love that you said is that I sound like the fans. I sound like the people with Ryan Tannehill. What if I told you the fans were right and the organization was wrong? Because clearly, if you've done something for 24 years, right? You've done the exact same thing for 24 years. Overpay people. Not take care of people that should have been taken care of a long time ago, right? I'm so glad that you brought up Christopher Aloysius Greer III, right? One thing that you this have is about to be Tua, not Christopher Greer. And, uh, one of the things you have to be when you're in a position of leadership, you have to be an honest broker, right? And and I'm I'm glad that certain players are now leaving and we're starting to learn a lot about what's going on. Um Xavier Howard was just on 560 AM, you know, a sh- a show that the fans listen to, right? And he basically debunked that Christopher Aloysius Greer III went on the podium and said that the door is open for X to return. Xavier Howard basically said on that show that Christopher Greer is a liar. The door is closed. Here's the issue I have with your logic, right? You keep saying we improved, but have we really? When I look at this rebuild and I break down three years for Brian Flores, three years for Mike McDaniel. All of them are basically mirroring that they're still in first gear. They're not in the second gear, which is actually winning a playoff game, right? And I'm so happy that you brought up about quarterbacks, right? Quarterbacks are often judged on how they perform against a rival quarterback. Quarterbacks are often judged on how they perform 
under pressure when the lights are the brightest. You know, like when we watched the Super Bowl, right? I think we all had this feeling in our gut. Don't run too much time off opposing team because if Patrick Mahomes gets that ball and it's more than a minute and some change left, Kansas City is going to win that game. We had that same feeling with Tom Brady. We had that same feeling with Eli Manning. We had that same feeling even with Dan Marino, right? Dan Marino is infamous for being clutch in moments where he was called upon and given the responsibilities. And this is why the QB1 gets this contract. I strongly disagree that Tua has earned his money. I strongly disagree that the organization is seeing progress. I would give you another word. I think they have pride. I think they don't want to confess what we already know, that this was a bad decision from the get up. So instead of making the necessary changes and adjustments and do it the right way, we're going to continue to stick with Tua. We're going to pay him like we did with Mike, um, not Mike McDaniel, but Ryan Tannehill, where we're doing more and more years of possibly getting 10 or 11 games, not getting 12, 13, 14, like what the elite teams do, not securing the first round so you have a first round buy. Of course, with him being injured, I would think he would want to buy so he could rest up himself. Or at least if you get in as a wild card team, that you can go into someone else's stadium or maybe host a wild card game if you take care of your business. Because let me tell you something, Finsanity, and some of the people that agree with her views, right? If Tua Tonga Valoa, after Thanksgiving, after he ate his chicken and his mashed potatoes or, what, or his pig or whatever he ate on Thanksgiving, we had another collapse. He didn't look like how he looked when he was throwing no-look passes in September and October. He didn't look like how he looked when he was threading the needle and getting those passes in the over wide receiver's hands. You know what he was doing? He was throwing interceptions, right? And what a lot of your fans will do, instead of holding that accountable, like with Claypool, you will say that Claypool ran, ran the round route. If it was any other quarterback, you would blame that quarterback, such as Justin Herbert, and say, oh, look at how he does. He throws interception. Josh Allen. But one thing I can give Josh Allen is that he can come into Miami-Dade County in December and win a game, multiple games, for when it matters, right? Not just a little regular season win that doesn't really hold too much weight, but I'm talking about the actual gusto. So when you bring up him bringing in talent, I'm glad you said that. Hooray to you, because I'm going to sound like Nene Nastisha Michelle Robinson, the person that researched and that actually does my own research and not copy other people like it's been implied on this particular space. But when I think about how Christopher... Oh, Iris, um, this space? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, well, no, no, she, no. Implied, she implied that she wasn't hearing from Nene. She was hearing from other people and she was disappointed. So I'm using that point to let her know. You are now speaking to Nastisha Michelle Robinson. You're not even talking to Nene no more. You're talking to the actual human being behind the nickname. So my whole point of you saying about him getting talent, yes, you can get talent, but you cannot continue to get people on rookie contracts, not sitting to the table and closing deals or picking up the phone because a GM just doesn't trade and get talent. You can actually trade away talent to make sure that you have something that's equal value, that's what's going to walk out the door anyway. So now we're in a situation to at least about 40% of his draft picks are going to be walking out the door without any compensation in return, part one. We're going to have to get cheap labor. We're going to have to find people from the family dollar. We're going to have to look for the stock boys and see if they play defensive tackle or cornerback or safety because of his mismanagement of being able to take care of his business. Yes, he brought in Tyreek Hill. Yes, he brought in Jalen Ramsey. Yes, he brought Bradley Chubb. But you know what else he did? He gave up a lot of draft picks. He gave up a lot of capital that he probably shouldn't have done because at the end of the day, if you wasn't going to execute in 2023, 2024, then 2025 is going to be a wash because all of these people that are now- Yeah, they're going to be gone. All of these people that's going to be on rookie contracts, they're either going to be- gone and then the arrogance of him not doing his job to stand behind a podium and say quote 
they earned their right to free agency. <laughs> yeah, that's, bad that, is, that is Greer. But if I feel like Greer, Greer, if we were to talk about Greer, that's going to have to be a whole other... No, I just want to put that show. emphasis because she brought in... She, it's just like whenever you bring in case study. When you mm. bring in evidence, you should be able to rebuttal that evidence. That's she true. Said, she said on the record that Greer has done what he's supposed to do and he's brought in talent. And I'm taking a small part of our day to articulate that he didn't do his job. That a lot of his decisions are based on pride and ego. You talk about the fans wanting to go microwave speed. Greer went microwave speed. Once he let go of Flores and he mm-hmm. banked the bank and started trading away all of our assets. Because now when you look at the... Um, the the excuse me the Kansas City Chiefs. Do you know at least five of those players could have been playing for the Miami Dolphins? Probably, probably. And you know the sadder part, more than anything else, is the fact that had we stuck to our guns and kept our five year program that we were doing with Flores, we started out with the with with cleaning house first year, first second and third year. Let's settle this defense. Third and fourth year was gonna be the offense. And and people forget that he wanted McDaniel. That's the part that's so annoying. So had we actually stuck to our guns, we would have been in a much better position, in my opinion, to have to have uh, made some moves. But look, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what that's that's this is where we're at right now. We can't it's revisionist uh history. Yeah, I was just endorsing her point. Why, why do we act like this is a Miami Dolphin problem? This this happened. No, 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 no. Uh I'm why not gonna let you at- do the school of EM. That's no, what no, no, no. does. No, no, no. He starts bringing yeah, because it's other not, people. Listen, I mean, I none of y'all have her. talked about what we were talking about, but go ahead. What I'm saying to you, for Sanity, and that's that's the basically we could probably end the the conversation. That's the white flag right there because we're no longer including the the ingredients in the conversation of the Miami Dolphins. We're softening the blow of mismanaging this rebuild, right? And lying Misman- to the fans, mismanaging it. Yeah, yes, you are because at this point. At this point, okay. we don't even Go know. Let her rebut because you 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 had it. Now let her rebut. Now let her finish her point. No, but I didn't get a rebut because you started kind of talking over my rebut. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give yeah, My whole space. thing is I wanted to get one key point because now we want the mm-hmm. Greer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of that because I know that gets very shaky in the community. I know a lot of people don't like blaming who's actually responsible for the problems that we see every day with the team. But I'll go back to your progression of tour. Right, you go from a thirty point per game team before Thanksgiving, and you end the season in the last five games. I think around fourteen points. How in the world? That's my arithmetic. Is is different than yours, or different than the people that support your view? How in the world is that showing somebody progression? That you went from the red hot summer having thirty points per game, and let's be honest, dear. Most of these stats are skewed off of two games in particular. Denver Broncos, 70 points can be at least three or four games in one. Your New York Jets game and your Washington Redskins game. Because when you really start looking at the data, right, on how they performed against Kansas City the second time, how they performed against the Buffalo Bills, how they performed against the Tennessee Titans, and I will give you a caveat. The one team that we did beat that's considered a team that is a contender has the same problems we do. The Dallas Cowboys. They are known to be a horrible road team. They are known for their fans being delusional on where they are. They are known for December collapses. So even what you're talking about improvement, those 14 points and the games that matter, Tua, stunk, call it what it is, overthrows, underthrows, interceptions, fumbles, just looking lost in the sauce, it got to a point that I started praying for him because I know that you mentioned prayer when y'all was speaking about me in other podcasts. I started praying for him against Kansas City because it just looked bad. He was downside height, just throwing the ball, just throwing the ball to the referee, throwing the ball to the fans, throwing it to the hot dog seller. He got so shook and nervous in the midst of pressure, we didn't even know that we still had Tyreek on the field. We didn't know we had Jalen Water on the field. We had people streaking wide open if you watch the All-22 and he just overthrowing, not throwing to him, taking sacks, just going back to the Tua Tonga Valoa of Brian Flores and his toxic leadership. Could it be possible that Brian Flores was correct about Tua? Because when I look at the quarterback that he did want, Jordan Love, hmm, 
he looked pretty good without a Tyreek Hill, without a Jalen Allegedly Waddle. wanted. Allegedly. He still hasn't yeah, been I'm going to call it what it is. Uh, Y'all know me. You can say alleged for your record. I'm going to say he wanted him, and he was right. Because I think if you put a Jordan Love in this offense with Tyreek Hill, Waddle, and all of the weapons, we at least win a playoff game. I definitely know if you put a Josh Allen in this offense with the weapons that we get, we at least win the playoff game. So anyone but Tua we win a, no, uh, is your argument. Anyone no, but Tua we win. I would say win. this. I would say this. I think if we become honest about Tua, because she said something that I thought was so unique and I love it. He's still learning how to win. Hmm. This then why would you guys this whole team is? So this why were you so ups- why were a lot of the fan base so upset about Fitzpatrick? Where he could have did like Jordan Love and actually sat and learned. How to be a QB one in the NFL? Well, that situation. Okay, no, I'm gonna no, interrupt. No, no, I'm gonna, no, hold on, no. hold on, hold on, pause. Let me let me interject you real quick because I know you were going off for a while, and I know we're time constrained. So I want to make sure that I give uh, Finn Sanity five uh, an opportunity to rebut. But I, I I do need to get in here. The only reason why Tua came in when he did is for two reasons. The hurricane that moved our bye week, because he was supposed to be coming in week, I believe, 14 or 13th, not week 7. And that changed it up. And two was our owner, who he wanted to see his brand new shiny toy. And it completely messed up that. That That's on Boss Man Ross. He's the one that wanted Tua right away. And because of the hurricane, we had to switch our, our um, bye week. Uh, so because of that, Tua came in way earlier and that's when Flores said if he's my son i wouldn't put him in he's but still Ms. Ferris, let's be honest i'm glad you brought up Ms. Ro- uh, uh ross and and, and i'm definitely gonna let you but but i don't agree with the ross tape because to me ross is the only one that got some sense in here ross no nope, doesn- nope, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let you say ross oh, has hold, some on, hold on hold no. on hold on let me get the point out i can't ross nope. Ross I, wanted that's a whole nother topic, Nene. No, we could talk about no, so I don't mean no, no because because we can't even we we got we're jumping through and we can't even if you talk about Ross, that's a whole nother tangent, and then we're not even gonna finish at least the one of Tua. We can't even go over uh other takes because of this. So well, well let's be honest, maybe those other takes are for another day, but what, what I think is unfair is that we'll bring up a name and we'll bring up a situation. And then when I rebut it, we don't want to talk about it. Then don't. It's I don't, don't want to talk about it, but Fisani hasn't even rebutted your rebut to her rebut. No, what I'm saying is consistent. Then we should be careful of what we we say, so I don't rebut it, right? So we don't have a longer show if we don't want me to rebut it. Got it. Noted. Go ahead, Fisani. Rebut the rebut. Which part in particular does? Is- it's been a lot. It's been a lot. We got people saying the rebuild hasn't been a success. That's interesting. Um, we got people saying, you know, Jordan Love. I mean, put Jordan Love on this team in 2020, and, and we'll, we'll see where the chips fall with his career. Um, I will say this, because we have gone – around in a circle, right? We have started on one point, now we're 10 miles down the road where we're talking about rebuilds and all this type of stuff. (sighs) My point to the topic is simply this. Chua was given the opportunity to rehab, progress, and get better. Do the fans always like the results? No, that's their preference, that's fine. I, I do know, like, when I ask people all the time, give me an available QB that you would rather have, we hear crickets. We hear crickets. And for me, I say Tua took advantage of the opportunity for two main reasons. Two main reasons. One, he progressed every year. You can say, oh, we like to throw out empty stats. QB stats are not empty because they actually have to throw to a player and and that person has to catch it. They're not individual stats. Okay. Um, And two, I will say that we have consistently won more each year. I don't, I understand that the fans, most of the fans' frustration comes from 
not getting over the playoff hump. And hey, it's, it is what it is, right? Tua has to get over that hump. But to say that he has not progressed because he has not done that, then to me, like, nah, that's, that's no. Look, look at how he has gotten better. Look how his strength and conditioning is up. Look at how his leadership is up so much that he has now been named the captain of the team. I don't, I don't know what more the fan base wants outside of that playoff win and the Super Bowl win. But to say that Tua has not gotten better from what he was when he first came into this league is an irresponsible comment because no one would sit here and say that they want 2020 Tua. No one would say that they want second year Tua. No one would say necessarily that they want third year Tua, even though he was laying it up a little bit when he was playing. And we all felt that when Tua was on the field, it gave us the best chance to win some of these games. So, it's, like I said, I feel like May and I just have two different viewpoints on it, and it's fine, right? Her thing is, he has to win in the big games, he has to win a playoff game, and there's nothing wrong with saying that. But what I'm saying is his skill, his mechanics, his leadership, all those tangible qualities that we do quantify have gotten better. And that's why I don't necessarily, if you, you notice, I haven't argued. I've just stated my points of why I do believe he has progressed. And that's all. My turn, because I definitely want to get into this. For being a top five pick, he absolutely has not taken advantage of his opportunities, period. No matter any way you slice it, it it's a top five pick. He hasn't. Four years, one playoff appearance. He has not period, no matter how you want to slice it, he has not taken advantage of his opportunities. Taking advantage of your of your opportunities, you got to take your team on your back and move forward and get Listen. through the playoffs and Listen, keep does, going. Does, does, does he has not, as a top five pick, hold on, hold on, as a top five pick, he has not. Team, now, as a, as, a as a quarterback, as a quarterback, Sure, this he's gotten the opportunity to get better and continue to, to, to do it. But not as a top five pick for sanity, okay. no. Top five picks normally go to horrible teams. Like, let's call a spade a spade. A lot of them don't win their first playoff game. Like, what? let's be real. Really? Did this. we not just see CD Strike oh. literally take the worst team in the league Talk and take him and win a playoff game? That's an anomaly. That? How often Talk does that happen, to... Miss Vince? How often does that happen? That's an anomaly. Yeah, does it happen outlier. though? That's does it happen outlier. though? Burrow did the same thing, and the Bengals suck. You have an unrealistic expectation. Yeah, but that is no, crazy. He's a Hold up, but this has happened that enough for us to be able to see if his sanity. Do that not say that it doesn't happen. That is crazy. I didn't say that it doesn't happen, but the likelihood of it happening, it is not. Peyton Manning went years without getting one. Are we crazy? And I'm not comparing two of the Peyton Manning because it's not. Oh, I was about to say. But, but you kind of are. No, 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 no. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is, is that Why well, throw his name out there then? Because sometimes you have to realize that the organization and its totality isn't ready. Like, oh, it's not. Oh, we're not ready. Huh? So which one it's is his first, it's his first, it's his first, it's his first playoff. It was his first playoff game. Not every quarterback goes in and wins their first playoff game. Listen to me, Miss Fincetti. Uh, I, I mean, did we not like, just see two players who just oh my started gosh, the drop? Oh my God. No, hold, listen, hold on, hold on, oh hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I understand in the majority, you're right, for insanity. Thank it doesn't you, so that, happen. That's it. That's the you're point right. Of it. You're that's right. Annoying. In that's the majority. The but you acting like it doesn't happen. We saw two it's, quarterbacks it's who became very, starting quarterbacks rare. of their league, it's of their team last rare. year, and literally it's destroyed very, their opponent. It's very in that rare. And it's Finn. not very rare. Come on. It is not very rare. It's rare, not very rare. It happens every year. It happens every single year. We just Emily don't Finn. see multiple teams do it, okay, but it happens okay. every year. Em, 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 Emily Jones was out there killing the Cowboys. Miss Fins, let me, let me also Cowboys. add this in. Come on, man. Out of all of the talent that Green Bay and uh, Houston had, 
Miami still has more weapons and talent for him to work with. And he still didn't get the job done. He was going Period. up against the Ravens. So he still going up against the, the, the best quarterback, possibly, arguably, the greatest quarterback Well, they quarterback all had to. They all, they all had lost. To. And they all lost. No, what I am saying to you is this. You cannot sit here and say it has been done. You, can't say, you can't say it, it hasn't been done. And then we prove to you it's been done. Then we I prove said, to I you. Said that it's hold on, done. hold on. Then there's other people we I prove to you that, that other I, quarterbacks. And I never said it was never hold, been hold done. On. I asked Miss Spence how and, and often is it done. Here's the other so thing that I want to bring mouth. home. It because happens every this year. Because it's a weak oh excuse. God. Because let me explain something to you. Oh Cincinnati, God. Detroit Lions, Miami Dolphins, and the whole tanking year, they all three of them was basically one, two, three oh in the God. same situation, right? Tua has more weapons with than Cincinnati and the Lions. And check this out. Both the Lions have at least won a playoff game. Are you right? kidding? He, he has more weapons than Cincinnati. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You done. Because you like done. you said, nah. we don't interrupt you when you have your debate. You went on this long soliloquy about Tua's doing all of these. Every year he's getting better. It's bull it's crap. Not. It's fluff numbers oh that really God. do not matter. When you draft uh, and see, that's why I said you're never. Hold on, Nene. He has gotten better, but, but that's no, not this the what, end of be all. Hold though. on, let me let me get to the point. Go He's ahead. gotten better, but not in the regards of what we bought him for—a top five pick. Yeah, for the equivalency. That's of his what pick, the question is. That's why I said not. Not. you act like he came him. in this league whole. He was no, not. No, no, whole. no, no. We're not asking about everybody you're, else. You're, you're talking you're about acting like he came in as a top five pick whole. He was still a top five pick. He was a top five pick. That that is that is out. That's egregious to even to even say that because it's true and it hurts. That's why it's an egregious. And no, it's not. So we're you're, holding you're him not accountable. Putting it in totality. No, no, no. We're putting it. There's you know, every year. You the know, Miami Dolphins made a conscious decision to draft Every year, 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 we you will be in this 10 man, years baby. with Tua, oh okay. and we're still going to be okay. talking about he threw more yards this year, or he ran a yard this year. Yeah, let's justify keeping him. And that is why we're in the same spot, the middle of the freaking road, and not moving forward. Spence, you're, not ever being justified honest. Tua? you're not being honest about where he that is. That was not the point. The point was that he's taking the opportunity to get better. As a top five pick, no. As a top five pick, no. He wasn't home coming into this. Like, what is a good They should have never been okay. picked at the Miss, five. Miss Finns, Miss Finns, you were an athlete. Like the men. Miss Finns, you were an athlete, right? Like you yes, play, ma'am. You play sports, right? Multiple, okay. yes, for Multiple, years. Multiple, right? So, say you're coming back from an injury, right? Would your coach still expect you to play at the same level that you did the year before? There is a but, time period that you need to revamp and get your body ready when you're playing. Yeah, you got to get game ready. Absolutely. And it's been four years. It's been four years. Is he there? Is he there? Go ahead. Four years. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let her finish. People, some people thought he would never be able to throw the ball the same. When you've seen where he's, where he's darting that ball in the middle of the field. My thing is like this. Like I said, what I'm arguing is, is that Tua has taken the opportunity to get better each year to progress. You guys are arguing that he hasn't been given the opportunity in big game situations. No, and, no, 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 no. The, oh, wait, hold, that, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The original thing where, was. And that's where we divide. The original thing was. As a top five pick, he no, no, hasn't no, 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 used no. his opportunities no, neither. No, the original, no, the original point was that I said. Skyler didn't take advantage of his opportunity. And then Nay said Tua hasn't either. As a top five pick. He, he never exactly. said as a top five pick. Yes, yeah, she did. She, I literally yes, wrote it down. Is. Girl, I will pull, I will I wrote it down. Oh, please, you saw me it. writing it down. Well, she said as a top five pick, put that into context of what of where he was even in that top five pick. The what man has to rush back to have to have a mini pro day. Just, just go ahead and put the white flag and up and, and let's close no, the casket. So we're what are you we're doing arguing right two different uh, you, points. You're changing the argument. 
I'm not changing the argument. You're being a little emotional and, and like not, that picture. I'm not emotional. And that's what, what I am is getting. not going to allow yeah, some that, egregious comments to be made. Is, exactly is this your man? When, when it's not, is when it's, this when it's your not man? apples and apples, it's apples this and oranges. This is what we like got. Not. This is what it's we get ready to pay another 50 million and let go of good players that actually produce. We, we're letting guys walk that are actually doing and progressing properly while this guy he goes and says, oh, I learned how to do karate. And y'all count that as, oh, he's gotten better. He went and learned karate. Okay, now let me, let me pull back. He's gotten better. Nay, who do you want to quarterback? No, 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 no. Nay, who do you want to quarterback? Nay, who do you want to quarterback? No, what I'm saying is, fans, who do you I want to quarterback? Not, I want to make sure I'm clear because this is what a lot of the, the tour people do. They will start putting uh, weeds into your garden and, as to what you're saying. I've acknowledged that he has done something better. He's actually showed up the work for the first time out of four and played his whole whole duty day for a year. Congratulations for doing your job. I'm not gonna sit here. I'm not gonna sit here and do backflips and cartwheels because the man finally showed up to work for every game for the first time in his career as a pro. So stop the Tom John. Y'all are, y'all are we keep awarding. We keep awarding mediocre behavior. We keep giving more money and more years to mediocre behavior. And then at the end of the year, instead of calling it a buck, like they say in the streets, or calling it a bean or a hundred as to what the problems are, uh, we had more passing yards. <laughs> we should be more happy about that. I'm going to say, heck to the no, honey. I, I don't no one had to subscribe be, happy about to be a Miami Dolphin fan. To just play our 17, 18 games Who do you and want be happy with some fluff stats. Who do you want to quarterback? If you have weapons like, at the end of the day, you you have weapons like Tyreek Hill and and uh, Jalen Waddle and all of these other pieces, right? And some of the pieces you ain't even throwing to, like Braxton Berrios or Derm Smite, that's sitting there wide freaking open while you got your eyes married to Tyreek Hill. It's another reason why teams became, once we played better teams, they figured us out and started Yeah, knocking. we were easy to figure out. We're right, just right. Tyreek or nothing. No, That's let it. me get her because she earned it. Because when she starts saying I'm starting to sound like the common population instead of me, I take that to, to the bank. And I got to speak on that because now you you talking about my name. Oh, well, he's get... gotten better, though, Nene. I oh, will hold on, say hold he on. Does, but he what, I'm better, is, but... what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, how can I get happy about somebody doing the bare minimum? I'm not going to sit here and throw a parade and, and Biss Kane. For and him to do his job. I get what you're saying now. Then no. Now I get it. Yep, you're right. You're right. No, He's doing his I? job. You we, have told yeah. me. Hold on. I'm sure. And I wasn't on Spaces as long as you and, and, and YouTube as long as you. And I definitely have respect for you. I always say as a woman, Pinsanity. But I'm, I guarantee you, one of them folks speaking, well, if Tua was healthy against Buffalo, we would have won that game. I never said that. Uh, I, I, well, uh, if Ms. I Benz, did, did I ever say, say that? that? I'm sorry. If you didn't say that, but just based off of some of your I language, don't recall. Yeah, uh, I plead so, the fence. I don't recall. Well, what I'm saying, you seem like one of those people like, well, mm-hmm. as, as soon as he gives us a healthy season, you're going to see what he can do. And guess what he did? He did the same thing that Skylar Thompson did. A first round exit as a top five pick. As a person that you're going to mortgage more of your future and more of your assets into. It doesn't make common sense. It's why out of all of my teams as a Miami fan, all Miami, they're the only freaking ones that can't win at least the first round of their playoff series. They can't even get to the Super Bowl because we live in this sea of mediocrity. Oh, they showed up to work. Let's give them a ring. Oh, they had the best uh bathrooms. They're the best team in the league. I don't care nothing about that. I need you to finally live up to all of the hype that came from your butt from Alabama, Tuscaloosa. I need you to finally come in here and close freaking games. I need you to stop <laughs> being passive aggressive on the freaking podium, taking shots at a coach that's been gone for three years. I need you to stop with you. I got receipts. And putting more spotlight on you in the first place. So the Tua has, sharp. Tua, Tua has done a lot of self-inflicted pain to himself. And I'm gonna close my plane here because when you got Tyreek Hill, right? 
the person that, let's be honest, that makes Tua look very good because of his own individual talents. If he goes on the national circuit and say that this man, when you correct him, doesn't speak to you for weeks or a week or hold oh grudges, God, that may episode. be the reason why we can't move forward because he's entitled <sighs> and he has fans like you that excuse him just doing like regular you. work. Fans like you. When I say regular work, you sitting up Fans here telling like me you. I should be satisfied. I that never said you should I be satisfied. I ordered a steak and, and lobster. You never said that. Hold on. You're sitting here basically telling me to be satisfied never when I ordered that. steak and lobster and crab never legs and you came out here with Did some I dry chicken fingers and some mozzarella sticks without no Did sauce. I say that? See, no. this is the thing. You keep no, no, no. You, you keep, ain't saying you, that. You, you I'm saying this. that. Your whole argument, Ms. Fan, Ms. Fan Sanity, is that we need to be grateful that I we got that. him in the locker room. That's never, basically never what you're telling that. us to do. I never said that. No, that's, that's what you're that's saying. That's how you're like, taking. Oh no, you God. keep saying. Well, you guys, he's improved every year. But the record is still the, the same. Question, the result is still the, the same. The question was, has Tua taken advantage of the opportunity that this organization has no. given him? No. Oh my gosh. Okay. And I'll say it for the PBS. Heck to the no, honey. No. Because with all the he, talent, with all, improved, of the talent but... all of the extra stuff that we give him, five. he still okay. has not done what mm -hmm. he has been brought here to do. No. No. 11 wins. Y'all talk so bad about Brian Flores. And guess what? He Who had, talks bad he about had Brian 10, Flores? He had 10 wins. Who, who talks bad? He Don't had 10 that. wins okay, without Tommy Kill. No, no, no. So now, you're talking, now you're talking to the fan base. You're not talking. Like, well, well, talking, I'm, I'm talking, talking to the F. argument. I'm talking to the argument, argument that he has done what what he had. Listen, you keep you keep saying that he has done what he's supposed to do with what he has, right? You don't got a coach fired, oh right? You don't got I all these people that. moved. I just said he got better. Hold on, mm -hmm. hear what I'm saying? Because that's why we can't we can't get anything because you're not listening because the stuff that I am what listening. I'm saying, what I'm not what I'm not going to let you do is keep saying that I'm saying things that I never said. Okay, well either way, you're implying that we should be happy with two performance. Yes happy. or no? That did we I, should be I, happy I, with two. Did I say that? Did I say that? Oh no, okay, let me rephrase. No, no, that she we, didn't say to be happy, but no. we should recognize that he has improved as a starting quarterback, which I agree he has improved, and I expect him to continue to improve. But it's so, still so a tough five because so. what because what because what because I could say that you're implying that I'm just satisfied with Tua improving and not having a playoff win. And that would be a complete wrong. But you keep saying but, but ma'am, unless we gotta clip you. You just used as examples uh -huh. of me rebuttaling the frustrations of not winning a playoff game, of not doing some things that we mm -hmm. thought with this roster, with this team. And I'm not even exclusing that this year out of all years was the opportunities because some of the quarterbacks that could have beat us were not even playing. We had the reverse. We had literally a train to heaven right in front of us. And you go out there and crap the bed against a guy named Livis that we Levis. traded Levis, Brian Levis, Kill. Levis, Will Levis. That whatever. Y'all don't have to correct me all the time. Damn it, y'all know who I'm talking about. The guy <laughs> from Tennessee. And Ms. that's what makes it so bad. We love you, man. We just for the fans. Ms. Ms. We're not Ms. Ms. You, know I know, you and I know she's, like, she's not listening. Miss Fins, did I not say that anything that Nay said was not wrong? Did I not say that? I said nothing she said was wrong. I said that verbatim. I said why nothing, am I here? but, but Ms. Fins, did I also Miss Fins, did I not offer also preface in saying that Nay is coming from a standpoint of huge of the fans point of they wanting a playoff win and a Super Bowl win, right? And I'm talking it's about true. him taking the opportunity to take the time to get better. And I said we are arguing two different no, things. but Miss Fans, just and like that's what I'm saying. I'm listening to you, oh, but you're on, not listening on. to me. You know what you did? Because you, you wouldn't did be trying exactly to what like EM did. You gaslighted the points to make your point, and you forgot the most important thing that you said. You point. said Nene represents the fans, but I'm standing behind the organization. You left that part out. Telling me now. that he's done enough. Like he has taken the opportunity to get better. So now, Ms. like Fins, I said, I'm not Ms. arguing Fins, the pause. fact that I mean, not Miss Fins, Miss Fins, 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 F
you just told me that you agree with my premise, then turn around and say, no, I kind of don't agree. I agree with this premise. So which one is it? No, 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 no. What I said was, I never said that. What I said was, nothing you said was wrong. Correct? That's what I said. If it's not wrong, then what is it? I said nothing that you said was wrong. What I said What does that mean? Pause. Because to me, like Ms. Finn said, I think you do a lot of gaslighting. If it's not right, I if it's not wrong, then what is we're it? We're both right. And that Nana, you gotta no. let her finish, though. Nana, you gotta let her finish we're so she can get going. Right. No. We're both arguing two different things. No. We're no, no, both no. right because we're arguing two different points. Two things can be right. Tua can be progressing, but Tua can also have not performed in the big moments. And well, that's what you're that looking for. That is true. I'm like saying he took the opportunity that the organization Ms. Don't let gave her do this him to, you. to get no, better. No, but hold on, 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 hold on. Okay, okay so. Doing here? No, no, then let me let me get in here because now let me let me go ahead and dissect it because both things are true. As a top five pick, he has not met up to that, but he has progressed. I will concede to that because I agree on both points. However, when it comes to this particular QB, you're in year four. I'm already conceded that they're gonna want to keep you um uh um developing fine but don't don't come here and say that he has used his opportunities because in my opinion using your opportunities taking things to the next level you just progressing is just you just that's a natural progression you're getting better you is a natural progression getting to the next level that is taking advantage of your opportunities not Here just just getting better because you're going to naturally get better it's called experience but not the not not getting to the next level that's where i'm like no he hasn't taken advantage of his opportunities Again, I'm pro Tua. I'm all Tua. I, I'm already resound that he is our quarterback. He'll be one. Pay the man the money, whatever. But what I'm saying is, as a top five pick, no, he has not taken advantage of his opportunity because guess what? This entire season was the golden season that every other team had to mm-hmm. beat the Chiefs, and we didn't. We had two shots of these guys, and we didn't. Not once beat them. And I get it. The quarterback is not the only guy playing. He's still got 10 other guys in that offense. But still, that's where the quarterback, especially a top five pick, is supposed to put this team on his back and be able to deliver it. And he still hasn't gotten to that next level. And it's year four. Yeah, and Ms. Fans, Ms. Fans, that's my frustration with this argument, right? I don't want to talk double talk to just say that I got along with a debate. The debate to me is very clear. When you use the example of someone like Skylar Thompson not meeting his expectations, what are Skylar Thompson's expectations? He's a backup quarterback, right? Nene, thank you for reminding me. I'm sorry. I need to cook this because this this was the part that I didn't get a chance to say yesterday. So I'm so sorry. I got to cut you off real quick. It's but your I gotta show, get it out. So go ahead. Listen, the fact that people were trying to say that Skylar Thompson got a shot. But but Tua now Tua has taken advantage of this. First of all, if you wanna put in the fact that well Tua, you know, he's coming off injury, he's gotta get better, he's gotta rehab, he's gotta do all this to be okay, fine, I'm with you. But then let's go ahead and keep the same energy with Skyler for the fact that he didn't even get prepared. I played three games and his third game starting as an NFL quarterback. Seventh round, might I add, he actually put up points in that offense that his offense was able to move forward. So do not come here and tell me that, yes, Tua took advantage of his opportunities because he keeps getting better, but then Skylar Thompson didn't take advantage of his opportunities because he didn't win the playoffs. That 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 that, that math is not mathing for me. Because if if Skyler didn't take advantage of his opportunity, then Tua definitely didn't take advantage of his opportunity. I and he was a starter. Hold up. So you come can on. You can end said, the show. End the show, Miss Fans. I it's never over. said Skyler didn't take take advantage of his opportunity. Miss Fans, that is exactly what you said yesterday. Don't don't do that. No, 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 no. What I said that if Skyler would have came in and lit it up, lit it up. That's not what you said in the what? comment. Man, man, you know what? The, man, oh. Don't tell me what I said. How are you going to say it? Okay, fine. You said that. You said that. No, 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 I'm going to give it to you. You said that. Okay. No, no, no. When has Tua lit it up, please? 
When has Tua lit it up, please? I'll wait. Go ahead. Continue. Because it definitely it's wasn't it's against it. Buffalo in your own house. Well, you got Josh Allen looking like. No, let her answer. Let her answer. Go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll pause. I, I think spoke to, end the I show spoke, now. <laughs> I spoke to that point because people said that Greer wouldn't have made to move, would not have made the move to move off of Tua, and I said that if Skyler would have came and lit it up, he might have had to make that tough decision or he have or have a conversation about it. The fan base. The fan base were up in arms about it for just an average game. So imagine if Skyler would have came up in here and lit it up and actually won a playoff game. And I like, was the one that so, told that, you that, was, that Greer was never, even if this man would have lit it up, Greer would have never moved off of Tua. Because then it, he would have yeah, had to admit it, that it, Flores was it right. Have, it would have been a discussion if Tua would have came and wet the bed. It would have been no discussion for sanity. Not once. Not once has this man had any competition. Not once. They literally. Not once did he not have competition. Not once was that. Tell me. Tell me Ms. when this it? man has had competition. Ms. Please Ms. tell me. Can I answer me. the question? Can I answer we're not talking about backup quarterbacks no, either. Come on. Can I answer the question? Because see, this is how her and people like uh, the, the, the EMs and all of them get away with. We start talking about five different things. Go ahead. You know why Skyler wouldn't have got a shot? Because even though Skyler put up that, that performance in Buffalo, they still went and got Mac White. And they put Mac White who didn't play with that team, who didn't, you know, almost get a victory against a team that I think we were 90% underdogs. He never had a shot because if you pick Skylar Thompson to succeed to her, then you're admitting two things that Greer would never admit. Brian Flores was right and that Tua wasn't it. Because you bring in Skylar Thompson, let's say Skylar Thompson would have threw for 500 yards, got us to the second round, that next season, Skylar Thompson is still not going to be the, the starter. It's going to be Tua Tonga Valoa as the starter. Facts. He, as it should be. As it should be. So then how can you say this man got competition if I, you're all I guy? Said, I, said, I said if Tua, I said oh, if Skylar would have played like that, the here's what I'm saying, y'all, don't listen. I said if Skylar would have lit it up and then Tua would have wet the bed next year, which he didn't. It, was it wouldn't have mattered. It, w- it would have been voices in the front office saying, put him in. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't yeah. have. It's what we're trying to they tell wouldn't. you. If Tua, if Tua would have been playing bad, Tua is wetting safe, the bed, girl. Where he was wedding the Tua bed. had another. There's levels to this. Like, oh my gosh. But for insanity. You yeah. trying to tell that me. Means, that means he was playing so oh, bad. That means that he's playing so bad. that For insanity. If he was playing average me. or on par, then Let no. Let me know when you're but done so I can say my point. But, but if Tua was playing so freaking bad that we were losing games, wedding the bed, losing then yes, the conversation would have been had. Whether he would have done it or not, we don't know. But if this team was losing and we just came off a playoff win with the other guy, oh, you best believe something would have been He still said. wouldn't have done it because his name Yo, is Christopher wow. Aloysius Greer. Yo, Do you not wow. know your GM Yo, vicinity? Wow. You know, you're wilding. Wow. Yo, you don't know wow. your GM then. You don't Yo, know your GM. Wow. You don't know hey, your hey, GM. Hey, wow. hey, Miss Fins. Nah, let me, you know, let, let me no, that, I won't, I'm will not i not getting off this pony. Yeah, I'm not getting off this pony. No okay. way that man would have done it. Okay. No way. The example, we, no, we had Lamar available. We had Deshaun available. And they still didn't do it. Are you kidding me, man? Please. That's not the point you're not. That's the point you're not. Like, we're so bad that we're off of Tua. For, for insanity, let me ask they you something. Of Do like, you right, think? Stop. Hold on, hold on. Ta- the standard, is, hold on. Five fifty. Like, can we wrap this up? I'll Miss Fin Sanity, yes, Miss Fin Sanity. Let me ask you this question, please. Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. believe that this light it up? Because I don't know what that means. I guess that's a catchphrase for you. But this light it up. Do you think Tua Tonga Valoa lit it up after Thanksgiving? All of the games that we played after Thanksgiving collectively, to include the Kansas City performance. Do you consider him lighting it up? Yes or December no? and January is yeah, what she's yeah, talking just, about. No, just let her answer. Yes or no? Because you're asking Skylar Thompson, a backup quarterback, a seven round pick, to light it up, right? So I didn't cool. ask him to do cool. it. Hold on, hold on. I didn't ask cool. him to do it. Cool. Cool. I didn't cool. ask cool. him to do he it. Didn't light it up. Cool. Didn't he didn't light it up, it. right? Hold on, hold on. But did this to top it. hold on? Hold on. But did this oh top five quarterback 
a person that you have named to and on a whole nation of weirdos, by the way. <laughs> did this person like that's up. not that's not even what a two in there was. So like did, don't, did, don't even do did that. This person, weirdos, okay. Because I can tell you hung out with EM because you're talking over me as I ask you the question. Did this person light it up on once we hit the month of December 2023 into January 2024? Did he light it up? The same standard you're asking for a backup. What? I know it. it the, the truth makes you faint, huh? No, it I asked you, you straight up. Did he, did, he, did, he, did he play? Did, did he, he light it up? The, well? the quote that you just said, if Scholar lit it up and Tua wet the bed because... I'm, I'm saying for Scholar to even oh, had a on, chance, he would have had to do it. See, Maybe that's why thing. you can't hear me. That's why you keep no, saying what whatever. You're, 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 you're taking what I'm saying out of context. I said Scholar would have had to do that. Listen to what I'm saying to you. I'm okay, just I'm using listening. your words against yeah. you. You call mm -hmm. wet in the bed for Tua. I, I truly believe that Tua wet the bed after Thanksgiving this season. Mm -hmm. He wet the bed. So by your standards, we should be looking for somebody because he wet the bed. He didn't, he didn't light the it bed. up. He didn't wet the bed. Oh, he didn't? He didn't wet the bed, no. You we want to put up some stats here? Because I want to know what's your definition of wet in the bed and, 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 and playing good. Because you just said, if uh, I don't, for insanity, you don't. You only need. You only need December, ma'am. You only need December if you're gonna go that route. December and January. I don't know what you mean. He didn't. Did I don't he know like, what you mean. Did he, did he not wet the bed? He didn't. Yeah, he bed. absolutely did. Really? He did not. So, so you call? Uh, he did, we did it. Uh, wait, wait, wait I'm putting you on the stand, for insanity. How did he not wet the bed? Please tell the people how he didn't wet the bed. He's digging a deeper hole for himself. You might as well tap out now. Cause I love this part. I'm digging a deeper hole for us. You dig? You dig? We about to bring in. We about to bring in the casket. We about to put start the carpet and start putting the shovel. You may want to go ahead and re-ask me that question and give another answer. Go ahead, for Sandy. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to give a different answer. He was. He was five hundred. He was five hundred. In, in the show, Mr. Man. <laughs> he was in the show right now. Do you got the knockout sound? Do you got the knockout? Was, he, was he not 500? No, first of all, he's above 500. He was 3 and 2 in December. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. I am going was, was by. He three, I love, was he 3 and 2? I love what Lewis taught me about debating people that are similar into your, your profile when they do these gaslighting tapes. I'm not gaslighting. You just said. Birthday narrative was a shot and win on. in December. So long. Oh my God. In typical EM fa fashion, you, you, you're talking over me. You just said, uh, using your own words against you, that if Skylar played, lit it up, whatever that means, and mm -hmm. Tua wet the bed the next year, which I believe he did overall, he, he, wet, he wet the bed, that Skylar should be. 11, 11 and 6 is not wetting the bed. Miss Fancy, you are better than this. You are so polite and cordial, and that's why we call all those compliments gaslight. Because now I got you on the ropes, and you just keep talking through the example. And then when I get done, you say, "What?" I was eleven and six. I was eleven and six. What? No, no, no. I didn't say eleven and six. Don't we were talking about December, January. I said three, December, three January. Three. Did he well, wear the three. bed or not? He was three and three. He actually okay. Uh uh. Last time I checked, uh, that Kansas City game was in January. He was three and four, making him a loser. And and and, and who are those teams that he lost to and how? Because that, that Dennis context, Heat, Baltimore, Bills, Kansas City, Bills at home, right? Mm -hmm. With with the at, Tennessee with the, at home. Wait a minute. Let me give you another team. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because if I'm not mistaken, see, I love you, Miss Fans, and thank you for letting my voice be heard because I get to kill people like this. What happened to what we were supposed to be beating Lamar for the overall AFC conference to where the Buffalo game wouldn't have mattered? And you wouldn't have never played the Kansas City because you would have been the number that? one overall seed. I didn't say that. No, I am telling you what was the narrative. We had the opportunity, and this goes back to what you said the argument. There's no narrative. It was a fact. We beat Baltimore with number one the AFC. No, 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 Miss Fins. I want to bring it back because you keep saying that we're not answering the question. You said that Tua made 
uh, use of all of his opportunities. He had an opportunity to go. I did not say that. Uh, I well, never said that. He has. I never said that. Oh, can I get the quote again? So when I kill you, stop, I say what you said. Stop, said. stop, stop putting words in my mouth. Hold up, up with insanity. But you did say you that he know. took advantage of his opportunities. Did you not say that? To get better. Okay, no, so you're the one. Hold up, hold up. Because that wasn't the same frame that we were. Uh uh. That wasn't the frame that we were talking about. That is not what we were talking about when it comes. The argument came off of Skylar Thompson. We weren't talking about Skylar Thompson getting better. We weren't talking about Skylar Thompson getting better. We were talking about Skylar Thompson taking things to the next level and taking over the game. That's yes, what we were we talking were. about. And then we were talking about Tua. Now, if you're going on that concept, because you're just changing it, you're changing it into getting better. That's not it. That's, that's not my his opportunity. The beginning. My, that's my, that's been my point. So you don't beginning. even, so then you haven't even talked about what we've been talking about, what, what the entire point was of him taking his opportunities, which is why. I said you, he we, took oh, the opportunity Christ. that the team gave him with the time to no, get he better did to not. progress. Oh my gosh. And I said, you guys, you know what? I, you know what? I preface and we're, said, you guys are arguing something different. And this is what we're arguing said. the actual you argument. Are. You just brought something else different when it came to tour. That's all it was. That's all it was. Start playing the funeral. This is, this is, this is, this is what you call outrageous. Because I <laughs> what do you mean said, outrageous? I clearly said multiple times that my point was. That he has taken the time that this organization has given him to get better each and every year. That yes. was my point. Uh, that That's was the point you were making. Wait, that I was not the point you were making when you were talking about Skyler. But go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. I also said that Nay was talking to the point of the fan base that he hasn't taken the opportunity to win a playoff game or a Super Bowl. So my thing is like, when y'all say I'm not listening, I can lead y'all down the same path y'all trying to lead me down. You're trying to take it to your point, to your part of the argument. And that's fine. I'll walk down that road with you. But if I say to you, did two of his numbers get better each and every year? Did he yes, get more did. touchdowns? Exactly. Yes, they did. And that's why I yes, said, they did. Well, you so argued something right. completely different. That's my that's point. That's you that's literally argued something different. Right, so you wouldn't ask our questions. And that's why you argued something different. So you wouldn't ask our questions. If y'all want to talk about, if y'all want to talk about the two would go out there and take advantage of the opportunity to win a playoff game, no, that is a fact. But it is also a fact that two has taken the opportunity to get better. In each but other nobody year. was arguing with that. We literally both and conceded I wasn't arguing that with you guys better. about that. About oh, so you, about so the entire, was right. Okay, so where? No, no. You know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This came that said, from Skyler Thompson. Right. And that came from Skyler Thompson. The fact that I'm here. 30 minutes past the mother freaking mark that I said I needed to be out of it because I don't have what I need right now. It's really, I said, wrap it up at, at 5 Okay, that's it. It's done. Uh, we're, like, we're, like, like, we're, like, we're leaving. No, 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 we're leaving. I want to respect you. I that's said fine. Nay was right. I said You're, Nay was right. I said, when we were okay, also arguing fine. two different things. I said, two things can be Good. right. And You're this right, is why yeah. I'm frustrated because I'm trying to tell y'all. We're arguing two different things, but we're both right. I'm yes, we're both right, but the problem... And you're looking at it through another lens. But it doesn't mean that each lens is different. Is wrong. They're different, but they're both the right, corrective 2020 vision on the topic that we're both differently arguing. So you're the fact right. that we're doing this is unnecessary. Listen, we're going to move this past. Uh, at the end of the day, what happened is I just realized what happened, and um, we ended up arguing two different things uh she left because i know she had to take care of herself but um look at the end of the day unfortunately we ended up arguing two different topics and i didn't catch that i caught it but then i didn't really catch it i guess at the beginning of the show and then it it, it you just went through you know as far as i went through it's just another topic guys we'll see if we got part four or not at least for today this was very eventful, Nene. I uh, appreciate you coming through. I appreciate Finsanity, well, obviously. Uh, well, I mean, the I ladies have something? been, have been when, good. You debate, Go ahead. when you debate, right, and, and it's just like, you know, presenting evidence. Sometimes we may have one topic, but when someone brings in something, the other person can debate it. And I think that's how we started floating away from what, the actual topic was right is when you start when you say in your opening rebuttal and you start calling out a name 
now that you called out their name, I could rebut that name and what the way you used it. And you know, yeah. we love we love Miss Fit Sanity, but once again, play the music. Get 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 the casket ready. Get, get, oh get, Lord. We go we gonna wake her back up and then you know give her a couple of months to heal, get her wounds licked up, you know. And, um, she she you. was. I mean, she look. She's the, a the, bill, the, the, brilliant the, woman. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's why I call it a quadruple OG. It's just that we were both arguing two different topics, and I wish we would have argued the one that we were supposed to argue, which was. The only one that mattered at that point is as a top five that he take advantage of his opportunities, not of him getting better, but of him actually uh, taking things to the next step, because that's exactly the argument when we were talking about Skylar Thompson and we ended up deviating from that because she took it to, oh, getting better. That wasn't even the argument, but no, it wasn't. Uh, uh, it is what it is. Still love you for sanity. You when, know, when are you posting this so I can go back and listen? <laughs> I'm gonna take this weekend. I'm gonna have to go Monday. I'm gonna try to clip a couple, you know, teasers in there. But I, this, this, oh man, this is this was rough. Feel better, for sanity. Feel uh, better, Miss for sanity. We love you. Absolutely love you, uh, Nene. Thank you. Any final words? Any final yeah. words? Well, as I get my goat uh, apple juice, we are the champions yet again. <laughs> now, in all fairness, um, I I love. I love what we're doing here because I can't lie. Sometimes when I go on other platforms and it starts getting in that vein, we can't come to an understanding and calm down. Nobody calls for nobody G a grid coordinates. We ain't putting on the gloves. It was, we get passionate, but Miss Fence, once again, thank you for inviting me to your space and your 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 platform and having a uh, a very healthy debate about the Miami Dolphins. Well, thank you and, so and much. And people in the comments, y'all definitely could put who won or lost because that was a part of it. It was a challenge. We can't take it, it was a challenge for sure. But you know what? I think we all won. You know who really won? The fans. The Misfits fans, the Fitzsanity fans, the Nanny fans. The Dolphin fans won. I mean, it was good. I'm, I'm glad I finally got to get in in the ring. You know what I mean? Because I usually, you know, I'm a, I'm a mediator. I like to, I, like a judge. My grandmother was a judge. It makes sense. Uh, so for me, it's it's simple for me to, 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 you know, sit back and and hear things out. But look, I thought it was a great show. Guys, check it out. Part three, Back Alley Fiends. We're going to hopefully have another one. <laughs> you know, we'll see. This is, we're setting this up because eventually if we're able to do it, then I'd love to have this as something that the, uh, that the members, uh, end up getting. And then everybody who's a member is going to want to be, you know, anybody that's not a member is going to want to become a member so they can get this awesome stuff. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Fizz. That was Fizz 75. This lady to my left is, or technically my right, if you're looking at the screen, is Miss Nene. I appreciate all you guys for coming through. Take care. Let's go Dolphins and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day.